Miracy. Once there was a woman who went to visit her friend. Her friend was a weaver and had been making a beautiful tapestry on her loom. It was woven from beautiful silk threads of many colors. When the weaver saw her friend, she exclaimed, Friend, I cannot tell you how happy I am to see you. What a joyful day. Surely a day for celebration. Please come in and make yourself comfortable and I will get you something to drink. The weaver went into the kitchen to get a cup of tamarind tea. Her friend looked around and noticed the silk threads shimmering in the early afternoon light. They were so beautiful. And she was tempted. She couldn't resist herself. Quickly, she reached over and took one of the bundles of thread and she stuck it underneath her arm. Hi, I'm Lisa Bloom, the story coach, and you're listening to Once Upon a Business. In each episode, we explore a story, a fairy tale, folk tale, or traditional story, so that we can discover the amazing lessons relevant for business and for entrepreneurs. When the weaver returned, she noticed that a bundle of thread was missing and knew that her friend had taken it. She thought for a moment and devised a plan to get it back. Putting down the cup of tea, she said, Friend, what a joyful day it is today. Please get up and let's dance. In a tentative voice, her friend responded, Yes, let's let us dance. The weaver raised both her arms high and began to dance. She smiled as she turned in slow, circular motions, dancing with joy. Her friend got up, but instead danced with both her arms pressed close to her sides, clasping the bundle of thread underneath one of her arms. When the weaver saw this, she said, It is a day for celebration, friend. How is it that you dance with your arms that way? Look, dance like me with both your arms raised. The friend then raised one of her arms, but kept the other pressed tightly against her side. The weaver, seeing this, insisted and said, It is such a joyful day. Please dance with both arms raised. Look at me like this. The weaver continued to dance, spinning, turning and swaying with joy. The friend looked down and quietly said, But sister... I'm sorry. This is all that I know of dancing. Always be ready to dance with both hands free. This was a parable from Sri Ramakrishna and retold by Liz Mangual and Bob Kanagas. At first, this story seems very simple and yet contains so many layers of meaning. A story of celebration of life and of envy, of friendship and betrayal, a story of beauty and deceit. Maybe not such a simple story. The weaver is so happy to see her friend and immediately invites her to sit and drink tea. And while she goes to get the tea, her friend is tempted by the beautiful silk threads that were shimmering in the early afternoon light and takes them. It's striking how the weaver, knowing that her friend has taken her threads, does not accuse her, but instead devises a plan to get the threads back. She doesn't need to admonish or shame her friend. She simply encourages her to dance. It's as if she knows that her friend is more in need of celebration and movement, and maybe this will help her realize that she should return the threads. Is her friend envious of the weaver because of the beauty of her work? Does it make her feel less accomplished? She certainly seems less joyful than the weaver, who is brimming with life and color and celebration. I think it's easy to be envious of others when you perceive them to have more than you or to be more successful. In business, it's so easy to happen when we find ourselves craving what others have, their success, their influence, their financial gains. And it can take us away from ourselves, from our true talents, our needs, and even desires. It's almost like a trap, and it's so clear in social media, which feels like a platform designed to perpetuate envy and false desire. And I say false because so many of the images on social media are manufactured to represent something other than reality. I remember working with a client who was envious of a colleague who was very successful. My client felt like every time she had an idea, he seemed to get a very similar idea to market faster than her. And she was quite obsessed with him. Ultimately, she realized that the more she focused on him, the less she was actually achieving in her business. 
It took a while to wean her off, but finally she let go and began focusing on what she wanted to do. There's something in the weaver that's so joyful. She longs to celebrate and dance, but she also knows that if she convinces her friend to raise her arms, then her friend will be caught. And when she insists, her friend says, this is all I know of dancing. Maybe the weaver is trying to make her friend admit to her wrongdoing so that she can show her how envious and greedy she has been. Or maybe she's showing her friend how she could live if only she dared to do so. But to dance hands-free, one must first face their demons and acknowledge their mistakes, and the friend just isn't willing to do that. But there's also something about this story that bothers me. The weaver is so joyful and is so fortunate. She's working on a beautiful tapestry made from glorious silk threads. She clearly has all she needs and is able to celebrate, dance, and be joyful. We don't know what made her friend take the threads, except that she was tempted. Well, aren't we all tempted sometimes? To take that piece of chocolate, to stay in bed later than we should, to fall in love with an idea or a person or a place that's really not appropriate. It's so human to be tempted, really, since the beginning of time and of stories. And maybe the friend took the threads because she was hungry and needed to feed her children, or because she had a great debt to pay, or because she was ill. We don't know. Why must the person who is tempted be tricked into revealing their weakness? Couldn't the weaver have taken her hands and said to her, Here, this is my gift to you. You don't need to take them without me seeing. She could have given her understanding and respect rather than forced her to dance wildly and admit her flaws. I think that humility and compassion are sorely missing in so many parts of business and life, and maybe in this story too. I remember when someone copied my work and then sold it as their own. I was furious, and I tried to figure out what to do. One option was to bring in a legal team and try to figure out how I could get my rights back. And I debated whether I should do that, whether I could even afford to do that. But after a time, I decided to let it go. I decided that I could wish her well in my heart, knowing that I can continue to do my work, create more content, that nothing she or anyone else can do will change the quality of my work. So I let it go. Now, some people might tell you that I'm crazy, that I shouldn't have done that. But in this case, I thought that there may have been a reason that she stole my work, and maybe she just needed to at that time, and that's okay. Later, I found out that she had been instrumental in getting me invited to speak at a huge event that was a great opportunity for me, and I never heard that she'd used my materials again, but I'll never know that for sure. One thing I do know for sure is that we never know a person's true intention when they do wrong, and I choose to believe that we're all just doing our best. And sometimes that best is really not good enough, but it's still the best we can manage in that moment. And that's just going to have to do. I'm Lisa Bloom, and you've been listening to Once Upon a Business. You can find out more about me at story-coach.com. That's story-coach.com. Once Upon a Business is part of the Miracy FM podcast network which also includes such shows as Just Between Coaches and Soul Savvy Business. This episode of Once Upon a Business was produced by Cynthia Lam. Mishi Lance and Jeff Govertson assembled the episode. Danny Inney is our executive producer. Post-production was by Post Office Sound. To catch the episodes that are coming up on Once Upon a Business, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It really does help us out. Thank you. We'll see you next time.